What's going on guys? It's Michael from GPRisers.com back here again in the bunker. And in today's video, I'm gonna split it up a little bit. Uh, we did get another 6600 XT in that we will throw on our 11 card rig right there to turn it into a 12 card rig. And then we will start unboxing these 3090s. We have a 1600 watt EVGA platinum power supply a generic 12 GPU motherboard. We have a i3 processor, a generic, no, not generic, a crucial four gigabyte stick of RAM, an Intel CPU cooler, uh, some MX4 thermal compound. And of course we will be using our GPU risers and our GPRisers.com 18AWG splitter cables. Now with the 3090s, I'll show you guys uh, later how I will be utilizing splitter cables. These are very high powered cards consuming close to 300 watts. You do not want to run these cards on a single splitter. So I'll show you guys how I power those um, in the next video. Real quick, uh, we have three 3090s here that have been sitting idle. Uh, we are going to be putting it into that frame, which I think will ultimately go next to this 3070 Ti frame. We'll put those two holding rigs onto the bottom there. Um, but we do have a fourth 3090 that we've had on our test bench here for quite a while now. Now I'm excited to get this off. Uh, we've been doing a long-term profitability test on this card. This card was about $2,350, um, $2,350. And we have been actually mining uh, using NiceHash's Stratum. I did that so that the currency would be converted to Bitcoin, even though we're mining Ethereum. So that, you know, during a long-term profitability analysis, I figured uh, Bitcoin would have a less dramatic spike and a less dramatic drop in terms of market volatility. I might not be 100% correct on that, but that is the reason why I did it. And so I will do a full analysis video on that. It has been, I wanna say about 45 to 50 days. So it will be a good one. Make sure to hit that notification bell when that video does come out. So we will have a total of four 3090s, which will be pulling in around 1200 watts, which is perfect for these 1600 watt power supplies. Now we do need to transfer this 3090 rig into one of these. Um, the thermals on this, they're not bad, but they're, they could be better. They're just spaced way too close together. So if you can compare, um, you know, these cards are not too thick. Um, if you can look right there, the, the spacing on these cards is just not enough for 290 to 300 watts. Now, if you look down here at our 3060 Ti rig, this will show you the spacing that the 3090s will have. Additionally, they will have eight of our GPRisers.com 120 millimeter fans pushing a whole bunch of air outward. Right now that is pulling cool air out over here towards me, up to the ceiling and out the exhaust. This 3090 rig right here is blowing cold air into the cards and I feel like just bouncing hot air around there rather than letting all the hot air escape out this way. Which while I'm staring at this, I realized I should probably just turn this rig around. But I'm not gonna mess with it. It's doing fine right now. Um, I will, like I said, be transferring it into one of our 12 GPU frames. But enough of that. Let me go ahead and get the 6600 XT out. We will be, of course, using our four capacitor black risers to match the others that we used. So in this video, I will be adding the 6600 XT. I will take all the cards out, get the frame ready, probably get the motherboard installed and everything like that. And then in tomorrow's video, we will set all of them up. So that said, let me go ahead and get this out, get it put on, and we will be right back. All right, guys, we are back. I got the Red Devil up there. This is now a finished 12 card rig of 6600 XTs, just like the one right here. So we have a total of 24 6600 XTs running. On that, we are pulling right, if, I don't know if you can see it there, let me turn on um, the screen right there. We are pulling 1.93 kilowatts, so that's 1,000. 930 watts so that is under 2000 watts for 24 cards i think that that is pretty good so to put it into perspective each card gets 32 mega hash times 24 cards that is 768 mega hash for about 2000 watts so if we divide 1930 watts which is the total for both rigs and we divide that by 768 that comes to 2.51 watts per mega hash and if we do a 3090, for example, um, those consume about 290 watts and those produce on average, I wanna say 100 and let's go 17 mega hash, uh, assuming that the thermal throttling is under control and everything like that. 
that is a 2.47 watts per mega hash. Now this number right here uh, does not include system idle. So uh, when you're comparing the two, you're, you're, you know, the system idle stays the same regardless of how many cards you have on it. But if you did six cards and the system idle is 60 watts for 3090s, then it's gonna be an extra 10 watts per card. And the 10 watts uh, per card is just me you know, averaging out the 60 watts for system idle. So let's say that that's 300 watts per 3090. We'll do 300 divided by the mega hash, which is 117. That brings us to 2.56 mega hash per watt. So the actual efficiency on the 6600 XTs is better than an RTX 3090. However, this 3090 rig here with eight cards produces around, I wanna say, 920 mega hash. Now a plus or minus 10 depending on the heat and everything like that. However, these two together again is going to be around 768. So if we minus out uh, 920, that's gonna be 152 mega hash more from just this rig right here. So I just wanted to point that out since we are talking about 3090s and 6600 XTs. It's hard to compare these cards. Um, I, hopefully, you know, what I did on my phone makes some kind of sense. Long story short, uh, they are very close on efficiency. That said, um, if you notice, we did move the rig over here, or the rig frame, I guess. There's nothing on it quite yet, except for our fans. I did move our holding rigs on the bottom there. We have our 3070 Ti rig here. So I wanted to put the 3090 rig here, um, This well, the second 3090 rig that we're starting to build, because if you look down there, um, well, I'll walk over to it. You can see right here, this is where our other one is. So I kind of wanted to separate out the heat. Um, the 3090s are very power hungry, and the more power hungry they are, the more heat that they're gonna produce. So I'd rather the heat kind of uh, build up here, go upwards, it can build up over there and go upwards, um, not having you know the most powerful cards and the most power hungry cards right next to each other. I didn't think that that would be the best idea. So that said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cards out. Uh, get everything ready and in tomorrow's video i will assemble all of it so let me go ahead and do that and we'll be right back all right guys we are back um it has been a few hours since the last clip a couple seconds ago um, long story short uh, i put in the 1600 watt evga had everything connected up to it and it would flick on then flick off right away now the first thing when i think of something like that is there's a short or something's wrong with it so i disconnected absolutely everything except for the motherboard cable and i put in their little tester thing that comes with it and again it would switch on for just a split second and switch off and that's very indicative of a uh, bad power supply. So then what I did was, since I have a second one right there, I went ahead and plugged that one in, connected the cables back up, and the same thing was happening. Then I kind of ruled that out, that it was the power supply, so I replaced the cables with three different cables, wasn't that. Tried different slots on the PDU, wasn't that. So then what I did was I swapped the motherboard out. Um, as you can see here, um, this is the motherboard that I originally put in with the i3 processor. Um, so I figured maybe it was something bad with that. I didn't really want to you know, troubleshoot every little thing in it. So I just put a new CPU in, new CPU cooler that I took from this board that I believe is just bad. Um, I am gonna keep this off to the side. Um, took the CPU off of this, took the RAM off of this and put it on another one of these 12 uh, GPU mining motherboards. So then I put it back on, connected all of it, and the same thing was happening again. And I know it's not too bad motherboards. I know it's not anything with, you know, too bad processors or too bad sticks of RAM and, and everything like that. So what I ended up doing was I swapped the motherboard cable with the second EVGA 1600 watt when I originally swapped the second power supply, I kept all the cables from the first because when has that ever been a problem? I, you know, I've been doing this for years and I've never experienced that. I swapped the cables and then I turned it on and it turned on just like that. I left it on for a while. Um, that was definitely it. Super frustrating, but you know, I emailed EVGA. Uh, hopefully they get back to me. I don't want to RMA the entire power supply if it's just that motherboard cable. I will keep you guys updated with that. But that said, I'm going to call it a night, guys. I have been here way too long troubleshooting. It's, you know, sometimes when you put together things, uh, they work perfectly. 
sometimes when you put together one thing it ends up taking hours but i am glad that this motherboard is okay i think um, i'm gonna go ahead and put this on the shelf and we will use this for our next rig build i will leave it up here and we will use it later that said guys i'm tired i'm gonna head home as always thank you guys so much for watching our videos uh, we appreciate every subscriber hit that like button if you guys like what you guys are seeing um you know, we try to keep this stuff as entertaining as possible. We are going to be adding different kinds of content soon. We are just trying again to get all of these cards up and going first. But that said, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day and we'll see you guys tomorrow.